Hello everyone, Amy R here with Prairie Paper and Ink, and I am participating in a blog hop to celebrate the grand opening of Kennedy Grace Creations, which is a new online store and stamp line. So these are the things she had sent to me, and I got these three fun packs of sequins. I got the At the Beach sequin pack, the Mocha Vanilla Latte, and the Vintage Teacup. And then the stamp set I am using is called Beautiful Blooms Sweet Rose, and it is so pretty. So I've got a piece of Canson XL watercolor paper here, and I have it with the smooth side facing up. It doesn't really matter. I don't find this watercolor paper to be super textured, but I tend to go for the smooth side since I'm doing stamping. So I treated it with some anti-static powder first, and then I just put the large um, image onto just my Fisker stamp press. I could use my Misty, but I thought I would show other options. <laughs> so I used my stamp press and some Versamark ink, and then I pulled out my Ranger Gold embossing powder. And it just, this is always the best part because it's like, you know, you don't see anything and then all of a sudden you see something and then it gets even better when you heat it with your heat tool. So I let my heat tool heat up for a few seconds first and then brought it to the paper so that I could melt all of this embossing powder. And this image is almost perfect. Just like I considered actually just doing it as a standalone, like not coloring it or anything. But I was in the mood, as always, to watercolor. So once I was done um, heating it, I pulled out my Mission Gold watercolors, which I've shown many times. I've done a review on them. I love them so much. So I pulled those out, and I'm using my Silver Size 4 brush. And I just um, really watered down the one color, this kind of pink color and um, applied that and while everything was still wet I went in with a deeper concentration of that exact same color and just started going in and adding that more so towards sort of the inside of each petal and I let that sit for a minute I didn't again I didn't let it fully dry but it was starting to kind of you know soak into the cardstock and then I wet my brush again and just kind of moved it around a bit honestly I wasn't doing anything super technical or fancy or you know I didn't have the time to do a whole lot of layering but doing it this way it gives you that you know depth of color and it works so I did that and then I did pretty much the same thing on the two smaller little buds in this image and again always the, <laughs> I'm obsessed with you know embossing images and then watercoloring them I've done this I don't know how many times in the last few videos but it makes it so much easier because you can go on and do other areas and you don't have to worry about things drying which that's why I'm doing it so much because it just saves me so much time <laughs> plus it's pretty you know the embossing is just gorgeous so I mixed up one of the greens from the palette and I added some white to kind of create this mint green shade I was kind of going along with the colors in that um, vintage teacup sequin mix so I added that kind of mint green to all of the leaves and then I mixed up it was kind of like a sepia color that I ended up using on the flower centers and then for I just added a little bit of a really pale it's that mustardy sort of color in the palette and I watered it down quite a bit and just added that all around um, the outside again the nice thing about having this all embossed is I didn't have to worry about it too much I've sped up this part like the video I've sped up kind of but honestly I did this entire thing in less than 10 minutes I it just worked so I'm definitely on board with the whole embossing images and then coloring them, watercoloring them in because it just makes my life so much easier so after I did that I couldn't I couldn't not add some shimmer but again I didn't want to add um really really heavy shimmer I wanted the definition and you know that color to show through and um, I didn't want to overwhelm the embossing so I just squeezed a little bit of my Wink Estella onto a lid here and then I was just picking it up with my water brush I didn't want to pick it up with my silver brush I didn't want to get a bunch of shimmer stuck in the bristles of my silver brush so instead I just used my little water brush and just lightly went over all of this and it just you can see it just gives it that little bit of shimmer but it is not overwhelming and you don't see it until the light hits it so it's just it's just so pretty so once I was done that and this was completely dry I grabbed my these are the inside and out um, stitched rounded rectangle stacks dynamics from MFT and I used the largest die to die cut that and then I found some pattern paper in my stash. This is from the My Mind's Eye On Trend 2 pack. And I originally meant to use the foiled side of this. It was the mint green I was after. But in my head, I was thinking, like, I wanted a striped paper. And I didn't even realize until I pulled this out that it had the stripe on the back. And you can see I fought with it. 
I really wanted to use the foil side of it, but the stripe to me looked so much better. It just did, but I was like, I was trying really, really hard because it's like, don't waste the foiled side. <laughs> but the pack does come with two sheets of this pattern. So I overcame and I went with the stripe. I really did think it looked better. I'm sure some people are not going to agree with me, but um, this, most of the polka dots were getting covered up by this flower image. That's why I didn't see the point. And plus, I just, I like the stripes. It made the flower stand out a little bit more. But I still got in some shimmer. I remembered I had this Prima gold vellum that is so beautiful. So I pulled that out and trimmed off a piece slightly larger than the main image here. And it just gave it that extra something. And yet you can still see you know, the stripes behind it. And oh, it's so pretty, so pretty. So use that. And then the sentiment I stamped onto some Simon Says mint cardstock with Versamark and I embossed it with the same embossing powder. And then I just trimmed off the one end with my scissors and then I cut a little notch in the middle and then cut each end to meet that to create a little flag end. And then I adhered the watercolor panel to the vellum with some foam tape. So that's popped up. And then I applied my ATG adhesive behind the watercolor panel so that the, you don't see any adhesive through that vellum. And then I adhered that to the pattern paper. And then for the sentiment, I just popped a little tiny piece of foam tape on the one end there because that's going to hang over the main area. And then lined that up with the edge of the pattern paper. And then I'm going to adhere that to my um, card base, which is just a standard A2 size card. So it was heavyweight white cardstock cut to four and a quarter by 11 and scored at five and a half. So it's a five and a half by four and a quarter inch card. And then I've pulled out these um, vintage teacup sequins that inspired the colors for this card. And these, this is such a pretty mix. They're so pretty. So I had to add quite a few of them <laughs> to my card and I just put them in place and then adhered them into place with my, um, multimedia matte adhesive. And then to do the inside of the card, this is where I wish I had used my Misty because I pulled out Simon Says Cotton Candy Ink. And even as I was doing this in the back of my mind, I knew this ink was too light for what I wanted. It's such a really pale ink and it didn't show up. It does a bit as it dries, but not how I wanted. So I inked up the stamp again with Twirling Tutu and that's where the Misty would have come in handy, but this worked. I was able to line up almost perfectly in real life. You can kind of see the other layer, but not enough to like ruin the inside of the card. So my second mistake was again, and I knew this, I treated it with some anti, the anti-static powder again, but I knew that dye ink hadn't had enough time to dry. And then I inked up the sentiment with Versamark, poured on the embossing powder, and yes, it clung to the stamped flowers, which I knew better. <laughs> so I tried at first to fiddle with it to try and brush off um, the powder clinging to the stamped flowers with a little paintbrush. But then I started realizing this is going to take me forever if I want to get it to look right and to actually see the sentiment and it not be a mess. And I was like, nope, I'm not going to sit here all day and fiddle with this. So that little strip of mint cardstock to the rescue, I stamped it again with that same um, sentiment. And then you could see me there. I totally knocked over my embossing powder. I was having just a day. <laughs> so I cleaned all that up, stamped and embossed the sentiment on that strip of cardstock, adhered it over the, the Versamark stamped one, which again, you can't really see on camera, but in real life you could see it. So covered that up so nobody can see it. Only you guys know that it's there. Trimmed off that edge and that finished it off. So I will have links to everything in the description box below the video. There'll be a link to my blog post. There'll be um, pictures in the blog post as well as links to everyone else participating in this blog hop. Make sure to check it out if you are interested. Thank you all so much for watching and I will see you guys in another video. Bye.